Greetings you in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. We will take a short break from our reflection on the life of King David and look at Jonah. If you had attended service uh, yesterday, you would have heard Jonah chapter 3 already as the Old Testament lesson. If you have only heard the story of Jonah, and if you have not read the book of Jonah, I encourage you to take some time to read the book of Jonah. If you have already read the book of Jonah, I encourage you to read it, read it again, prayerfully, allowing God the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to minister to you. I can assure you, you will not regret reading through the book of uh, Jonah. Today we will look at uh, Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. God's call to Jonah. Tomorrow we will look at Jonah's attitude towards the people of our Nineveh. And the following day, we will see how the people of Nineveh responded to the message that God has sent to them through Prophet Jonah. Will you please turn to Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Because its wickedness has come up before me. The people of Nineveh were not notoriously wicked. The people of Nineveh was notoriously wicked. So God called Jonah, who was a prophet, and told him to go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it or to preach against the sins that they were committing. Why did God call Jonah and ask and hold him to go to the great city of Nineveh? Why didn't God just destroy the Ninevites? If their wickedness was so great, why didn't God just destroy the Ninevites? Will you please turn to Ezekiel chapter 18? Ezekiel chapter 18. Verse 32. For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the sovereign Lord, repent and believe. I repeat for you. For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone. That's is the heart of God. The God that you and I worship does not take pleasure in the death of anyone. His desire is to see sinners repent 
and uh, I'll leave. I'll read for you another verse from the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11. Say to them, As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. God, too, the prophet of Ezekiel, told the people of Israel to turn away from their evil ways. Why? Because he does not take pleasure in the death of a sinner. Why? Because of his love for you, for me, and for every single person who had lived, who is living, who will be living on this planet. A very popular verse, John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. The Bible does not say, For God so loved. The people of Israel. The Bible does not say, for God so loved the Christians. The Bible does not say, for God so loved those whose lives were holy. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. The God that you and I believe loves every single person. It loved the people of Nineveh. Yes, they were notoriously wicked. They were the enemy of the people of Israel. The people of Israel, the chosen race at that time, simply hated the, the Ninevites. They just hated the Ninevites. But God loved the Ninevites just as much as He loved the people of Israel. So He called one of His prophets, who was a Jew, and told him to go to Nineveh. The Ninevites were not Jewish people. They were Gentiles. And yet God sent a Jewish prophet to the Gentile city. That is the God that we worship. Now we know why Jesus came into the world. We know Jesus came not to seek and save the righteous, but that which is lost. Let me uh, share with you a, a legend that demonstrates the love of God for not only to a certain group of people but for everyone. It is a legend. You will not find this in the Bible. After the people of Israel, after they had crossed through the Red Sea, we all know that uh, God parted the Red Sea, and the people of Israel walked across the Red Sea on a dry land. 
Le Prince uh, Carol and his army, they pursue the Israelites. And once every single Israelite had crossed the sea, God just uh, closed the path that he had opened for the Israelites, Israelites to walk through. Pharaoh, that's what the Bible says, Pharaoh and his army were drowned. So when the Israelites saw that her Pharaoh and his uh, army had drowned or were drowning, they got excited. So Miriam took the tambourine and started to dance, rejoicing and praising God for killing their enemies, enemy, the Egyptians. They were very happy. They celebrated when they saw the Egyptians uh, drowned or drowned. Then they heard a voice from heaven saying, why are you all celebrating? Don't you all know that the Egyptians are also my creation? Don't you know that I love them as much as I love you? And then Miriam stopped dancing and celebrating. As for the people of Israel, the Egyptians were their enemies. So when uh, God closed the path that he had opened through the Red Sea, and when uh, the Egyptian soldiers drowned, they were happy, but God was not happy. Jonah would have been extremely happy if God had just uh, sent hail storm and fire from heaven and destroyed the Ninevites. But God did not do that. God called him and told him to go to Nineveh. If that is the heart of God, should we not have the same heart? If God loved the Ninevites who were notoriously wicked, if God loved the Ninevites who were causing havoc to the people of Israel by raiding the Israelite villages, killing and taking away what belonged to the Israelites. If God loved the Ninevites, despite of all their, the wicked things that they were doing, should we not also not have the same heart and love those who are living in sin? Should we not have our, should not our hearts go out to those who are living in sin? I believe as uh, followers of Jesus, as disciples of Jesus, we must have the heart of Jesus. Jesus made it very clear that he came to seek and save that which is lost. In other words, he loved those who were lost. His heart was for them to repent and to receive him as a personal Lord and Savior and walk in the path of righteousness. Let us uh, strive. Let us wait upon God the Holy Spirit to give us the heart of Jesus so that we too 
and her burden for those who are lost because of the love that we have for them. Will you do that for the glory of God? God bless you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.